Are you using Zoom for your next event or meeting? And you're curious about if you need a password, passcode, and how you would add it, or more importantly, as I had come up in an event that I did a couple months ago, how to remove the passcode. Well, I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons at the start, and then I will show you in the Zoom backend exactly how to do it. Before we jump into it, I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer. I'm based out of Seattle, Washington, and these are my weekly tips and tricks about event production, event planning, Zoom, hybrid, you name it. As always, if you like what you're hearing, please consider liking and click that subscribe button so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. I'm also the co-host of the Better Events podcast, a podcast I host with fellow event pro Mary Davidson. You can listen to it wherever you listen to podcasts. It's filled with more free tangible tips that you can av apply to your event planning, event management process. I promise you it is well worth the listen. But anyway, let's get into Zoom. As you know, I post a lot of videos about Zoom because I found there are great resources out there for you, but often people forget to show you how to do it. And Zoom doesn't necessarily have those like how to's. So there's a lot of things you learn by doing in Zoom. And so this video is based on something I had to relearn how to do uh, because it came up in a specific scenario. So what I'm talking about is here I am in Zoom on zoom.us, zoom.com. It's I call it the back end, but it's like the web browser version. Um, if you scroll down, it, it has it listed in one of the security options. And here it is. It says passcode and it's got a checkbox next to it. So you can check it or you can uncheck it. So passcode is one of your securities because your meeting will have a unique ID. That's part of the numbers that go in the link for joining your Zoom call. And if you have a passcode, that just adds like another layer of security. When you copy the link and put it in invites or event registration, it often will include the passcode and the link. You rarely have to type it in, apart from if you're someone who joins maybe from your tablet or your phone and you actually join meetings by typing in the meeting number, then it would be you type in the meeting number and you'll see it pops up and it will say, hey, this meeting has a passcode, can you enter it in? So it's listed in security because it's really a second step that you might have to do if you kind of are more uh, randomly coming to your meeting. But a lot of times, if again, if you make a link for your event and you have the passcode on, it will bake that passcode into your event link. So most attendees just have to click the link and it will enter the meeting idea and the password for them, no problem. So let's first talk about why you would want your passcode and why you wouldn't. So why you would want a passcode, it's again, listed in the security settings. I just say it's another step for someone just randomly typing numbers in. We all heard those stories at the start of the pandemic about Zoom bombers, which were just people who had often were harmless folks who just wanted to play practical jokes and had lots of time on their hands. So they were just randomly typing in numbers. And if it didn't have a passcode, it would automatically let them in the meeting. And then they would post something silly in the chat or inappropriate on the screen. And it slowly got more and more that I felt like I had more clients who were talking about security. And so the passcode was a first like very low hanging fruit to keep you from just guessing the meeting ID and joining the meeting. It did have view that you had to have sent a passcode out to people. This was usually via email, but again, to my earlier point, if you sent a link, the link to join the Zoom, it often has the passcode already baked in. Now, a reason why you might not want the passcode, so you would click the blue so it doesn't set have it, then now there's no password to get into your meeting, so they just need the meeting ID, and it would put them in the waiting room, and then you could let them in there from there. So an example of why you might want that is maybe your event, you have a registration list and it's 30 people and you know those 30 people. So if you see their name in the waiting room, you'll let them in. If you see a name that's not on your list, you don't let them in. So therefore you really don't need a passcode because it's not gonna help you sort people since you already have a list you're based on. I often personally will like to have all both passcode and waiting room turned on because again, it's just another layer of protecting people. But I did have a client who wanted to make sure that we had it turned on or turned off. And so I do want to show you this scenario that I had was we'd scheduled the meeting. It was a test meeting um, and I had required the passcode to be on. So you'll see here is if I copy this invitation link, you see it says uh, 8904042675. So that's the name. That's the meeting ID, which you can see it right up here. Here's the meeting ID. Then behind at the back end of the link, it does say password equals. And then it's got a bunch of kind of gobbledygook. But in that gobbledygook, is our code that lets the person into the meeting. So yes, just by copying this invitation, my attendees don't need to enter a passcode in. But if somebody enters just the meeting ID into their Zoom app or their program, whatever, if they're using it on their desktop, their laptop, their iPad, their phone, then it would prompt them and say, hey, you need this passcode. 
So often you would see if you're using the passcode, you need to send out the meeting ID, the passcode, and the link. It's often how I'll share share my meeting invites. Now, if I had this client who said, no, my meeting, my event was about to start and they realized there was a passcode on it and they said, no, we don't want a passcode on it. So what you would need to do is you do need to go in and you need to hit edit this meeting. You need to turn off the passcode, hit save, and you will see that meeting link. Now there's no little password in there, um, but that old link would still work, which is like the big thing that I always have to tell clients. So you can see there's no passcode anymore. My meeting ID did not change. It just removed that extra layer with the passcode, but I still have the waiting room. Now, the only caveat I want to have for you, if you are someone who's already started your meeting and like your speakers are getting ready and all of a sudden you realize you want to turn the passcode off, you do need to end the meeting and restart it again. So Zoom does not like that change I just made here on zoom.com will not update the meeting if you are currently in the Zoom. So you need to close out of your Zoom and then reopen it and it should then let folks in without the password. So that's that little little hack for you. So that's all about Zoom passcodes. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat. Again, it's just another security feature that I will constantly be using at my events, but it's not the best fit for everybody, so make sure it fits for your event. As always, I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and this has been another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event planning and running your own business. I'll be back in your feeds again next week. Bye.